I'm going for a sort of colonial harlot meets sexy milkmaid meets best dressed on the Oregon Trail with like a little sprinkle of future granola grandma. <laughs> Caroline, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's officially or, or almost officially that time of year. Fall is upon us, which of course means fall fashion and fall trends. I woke up and this really crazy thing happened where I just, I was feeling overwhelmingly positive and decided that I kind of just want to talk about fall trends that I'm excited about and how I plan on wearing and incorporating them into my wardrobe instead of also shit talking some trends. I know it's so crazy. Pulling out my laptop, which is always how you know that things are about to get serious. I mean, I can do a video soon where I do shit talk, some things, anything. Just let me know. I'm I'm, I'm really open to any and all forms of shit talk. So. Logging into my Pinterest. I recently changed my at from Caroline Tucker 4 to that ginger princess. I, I just felt like it kind of encapsulated my vibe a bit better. Starting off with something that I talked about actually in my summer trends video, but apparently like it was just getting started over the summertime and it really is supposed to have its moment in the fall, which is the color red. Red is not only my hair color of choice, but it's also my favorite color to wear, whether it's a full on monochromatic red outfit or it's just a little, a little pop of red, whether it's in a shoe or a bag or a little neck scarf. I think if you're someone who tends to lean towards a more neutral palette or understated clothing, if you're wanting to kind of branch out a bit, maybe be a little bit more bold, having something like a red neck scarf is a really easy and also cheap way. I mean, there's so many at the thrift that you can find and just try out. See how you like Even it. Even when it comes to beauty, I mean, I will always love a red nail or a red lip, which I mean, I kind of, I do my makeup basically the same way every single day because I'm lazy and my talents are pretty limited in that department, but I think not a full on red lip. I respect anyone who can commit to that. I just don't think I'm, I'm on that level yet, but maybe a nice red lip stand, you know, it feels, feels more effortless, kind of cool. Also, if it gets a little messy, it's like, oh, that's the vibe, you know, it like leans into the effortlessness. At least that's what I like to tell myself. Any sorts of vintage varsity style clothing and particularly rugby style tops. I was watching one of Lainey Ozark's videos recently where she was breaking down trends for fall 2023 and she had mentioned the rugby style of tops and then I went to a flea market later that same week that I watched the video and I noticed all of the vendors were selling those tops. Mind you for like 40, 50, 60 dollars and I'm like, I know that you got this at the Goodwill bins for like 3 dollars, but okay. I guess I respect your hustle. If you're a woman, if you're a man, let's get a real job. Let's go. What happened to coal mining? What happened to, th to that super ethical line of work, huh? Go build a house. In general, I'm very into like old school varsity clothing. I got this sick varsity jacket last winter that I'm so excited for it to get cool enough so I can break that out again, whether I'm throwing it on with a pair of baggy jeans or a dress. I really love like juxtaposition of an old varsity style like piece of clothing with like a girly little feminine article of clothing. I just, I think it's cute. I don't currently own one of those rugby style of tops. I am open to it though. I have a fall thrift list to try and keep me more intentional with my purchases when I am thrifting and not be so impulsive and on it is actually a varsity style cardigan so that's kind of what I'm more looking for versus the rugby style top but if I happen to come across one that I think is cute and I think fits my vibe and it's like three or four dollars I, I might have to say yes I'm, I can only resist so much, you know? Next up, we have neckties, which is a trend I take very personally as someone who my favorite accessory is any sort of statement neck piece. Whether it is a necktie, a skinny scarf, an actual tie that I like to wear wrapped around my neck as a skinny scarf, because I still this day, I just like, refuse to learn how to actually tie a tie. I also am always gonna love my gold necklaces, whether it's just one little nameplate a la Carrie Bradshaw, or I'm stacking a choker, a bolo tie. I recently added to my collection. I've never owned one before, but I saw it in an antique mall and was like, oh, that's fun. That's cool. I'm, I'm interested in the bolo tie sort of life. Back to the topic that we're here to discuss though, which is neckties. There are so many different lanes that you can go down when styling one, whether you want something that's a bit more simple and kind of like an ascot sort of understated kind of vibe, or you really want to lean all in and just have like a fun, bold color, funky printed statement necktie. I just think it can elevate an outfit and honestly add a level of cuntiness that I'm always striving for to add to my outfits. 
So. Oh, also, for any of my fellow sewing, crafty, DIY girls out there, if you have a piece of clothing that you're wanting to make a little bit shorter, hem it a bit, taking that extra fabric from the bottom of the dress or skirt or even top that you have and using that fabric and making it into a matching necktie, I mean, you want to talk about cunty. Colonial harlot core. Now, I'm not going to claim that I came up with this term, but it is something I started saying last summer. To break it down for you, it's essentially an outfit that incorporates older vintage pieces that could potentially look like something a woman in the 1800s who was churning butter was wearing, but it has other pieces in the outfit that kind of modernize it, you know, give it a bit of a twist, maybe are more revealing. So if a woman in the 1800s would actually be wearing that, she would have been labeled as a common whore and burned at the stake. I really see this style as a mixing of elements like denim and lace and white gauzy pieces with plaid or gingham, one of my personal favorites, but also throw in some leather and throw in some floral print. For example, take something like a vintage gunny sacks dress, which I feel like those have been trending for the last couple of years, but then pairing that dress with a sexy, sleek, black leather, knee-high pointed toe boot colonial heart. If you follow me, then you've heard me talk about this before. It's it's honestly one of my favorite ways to dress and I feel like a defining element of my style. Also, this way of styling for me at least helps with this problem I've run into a few times as someone who I love wearing vintage pieces, but I don't ever want it to look like I'm wearing a costume or I'm cosplaying when I have that vintage item on. I want it to look like a cool modern outfit in 2023 that just incorporates a vintage piece and so having that contrast I feel like it's really helped me with that. Mohair sweaters, which I know sweaters in the fall time, how groundbreaking, right? This sort of material is both the love of my life and the bane of my existence as a sensitive skin person who, I mean, just a gust of wind will sometimes have me just full rashy. I never know what I'm going to get when I put one of these sweaters on. It could be good or I could break out into hives. It's like a fun little surprise, you know, I never know what I'm gonna get. Similarly to incorporating the color red into an outfit, I feel like you can just throw on a mohair sweater and it's like the hard part is over. You have the fun, more statement piece on. You could just pair it with a simple pair of jeans, a loafer, a boot, a sneaker, and there you go. Just something like fun, kind of kooky. I, I guess I, I would say a mohair sweater, like there's, like there's a kooky sort of vibe about it that I feel like is just like a cool thing to experiment with. I actually have a couple hanging on my rack back there. I thrifted all of them and I'm so excited for when it gets cold enough that I can actually wear them with a thermal paired underneath so I can avoid the whole skin to skin contact thing. I just don't need to be at like a Trader Joe's at 3 p.m. on a Wednesday trying to have a meet cute moment and then I break out into a full body rash. You know, it's like, how am I supposed to flirt when I'm worried about the hives? covering my body, you know. Drop waist, exaggerated hemlines, peplum sort of silhouettes. These are all styles that I've seen rising in popularity over the last year and I feel like are just gonna continue into the fall and winter time. My neighbor just started blasting like 90s R&B music and someone is mowing their lawn, so I'm really sorry. But doesn't it kind of add to the ambiance, right? It's just like so busy and crazy and a city girl. I don't live in a city. So. I know the designer Sandy Liang becoming a bit more mainstream isn't the sole reason that these styles are becoming more popular, but I do think it's a contributing factor, at least for me, seeing a lot of the ways that she's reinterpreted things like the drop waist or the peplum and made it feel fun and fresh and not like I'm walking out of a Forever 21 in 2012. I'm, I'm, I'm into it. I've also seen a lot of peplum tops paired with some baggy jeans all over my Pinterest and I'm into that. I think actually I mentioned peplums in my summer 2023 tier ranking trends video and I said I was unsure about them at that time. I mean clearly in this moment I'm very sure about them considering I now own one. Speaking of things that I had mentioned in that summer trends video, I had talked about what TikTok had deemed the Jane Birkin effect on bags and since I posted that video, sadly, Jane Birkin, the icon, I mean calling her a fashion icon honestly feels like an understatement, but she passed away and just, I mean, the mark that she left, at least for all of the fashion girls that I know, just like cannot be stated enough, but specifically with her famous basket bag. Now, basket bags as a whole are not something I have admittedly seen a lot of people wearing, but I'm saying this now because I'm trying to manifest. Like, I want people to start wearing them more because I just think 
They're, I mean, they're just fucking iconic. It was around the time of her passing and, you know, with all of these photos of her circulating online that I happened to find a basket bag at the thrift store for literally $3. And ever since, it has been my go-to bag. I mean, Jane basically embodied everything that was cool and effortless. I know I've said that a lot in this video, but, like, she really was the embodiment of that. And adding a basket bag to any outfit, it's like, it doesn't fit and quite go, but because of that, it just makes it so much of a cooler choice and bag to go with. I, ju I just love them, and I love Jane, and I would love if I could walk onto the street and just see everyone rocking a basket bag. That, that's really, that's my ideal version of the world. Next up for trending items this fall is vests, which I didn't ever know that these were out of style and trend, but apparently they were and now they're in. And regardless, I'm excited about it and very well prepared with my vest collection. This is one of those times where as fun and interesting as I think trends can be, and they'll push me to try things outside of my comfort zone sometimes, they also kind of are stupid, you know? And you shouldn't really pay that much attention to them and how much merit should we be giving them at the end of the day because like I genuinely thought we'd all agreed that vests were just a staple. I guess if you don't have a vest in your wardrobe at this point, it's the perfect time. I mean, now or never, baby. You can get yourself a denim, a leather, a suede, a velvet, a silk, an embroidered, a puffer. The options are quite literally endless and can fit, I feel like, any sort of vibe or style or aesthetic that someone has. My favorite layering combination, which I also feel like can work for any style, is taking any sort of blouse or button up and throwing a vest on over top. It's just easy, but it really, again, it just makes your outfit so much more interesting. And I feel like whenever I'm wearing it, I feel like I look like I know more about fashion and style than I really do. I, I really like doing this with a dress. I have my maxi dresses and then I'll throw on like a white button up and one of my cool vests and probably a knee high boot yeah if I'm being real with you it's always gonna be a knee high boot but it just is like my go-to outfit combination I can mix and match so many different ways and it just it hits for me every time oh shit oh just bonked the tripod with my laptop I think is that good we're good. Athleisure with more stereotypically feminine details. I say stereotypically because I think it's stupid to gender any sort of clothing item, but you know, some lace, some ribbon, some silk thrown in with like a track short. I'm thinking of specifically uh, Adidas came out with a pair of track shorts recently that had lace trim at the bottom and they immediately sold out and are now of course being resold for like double, even triple the price. I mean, look, I'm not gonna tell you what you should or shouldn't spend your money on, but I will say it is not the most difficult of feats to find a pair of just plain track shorts and add a little lace trim to the bottom yourself. You don't even have to know how to sew to do it. You can, I mean, you can hand sew it if you really want to get crazy but also fabric glue it can be your best friend. Some people who I follow that I feel like do this mix really well of taking, you know, something like a hyper feminine dress that features puff sleeves and lace and it's very girly and then wearing it with a cool pair of sneakers and socks is immediately coming to my mind Jolie Malcolm if you don't follow her. She's the coolest. I can't recommend her enough. Also, Jasmine, that curly top, and Keely. Um, I'll have them all up on screen as well as linked in the description. I love all of them. Dark denim, baby. Another trend which has been on the come up for a while now, but I don't think we're going to see this stopping anytime soon. Denim in general is a classic, but everyone has their preferred wash of denim. Like for me, I really tend to lean towards a more light to medium distressed denim, but even with that being said, I have been thinking about getting my hands on some dark denim. Just something so sleek and chic about dark denim, especially a fully dark denim look. I've been keeping an eye out for a dark denim jacket and maybe jean set or ooh, jeans and a vest. That's an idea. That, and I could put some cool vintage pins on the vest. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I th I'm cooking with something with this idea. Different styles of buckles and studs on shoes, whether it's a pair of boots or some flats. This to me is also just like further proof that we are fully in the 2010s trend cycle. As much as I, I try to be in denial and then fight it, I just, I can't fight any more. The peplum was the first time this was happening. And now with this, 
The obsession with adding studs to any and everything that you owned in the 2010s cannot be stated enough. Inklings of this started to pop up around this time last year with studded belts and bags, but it wasn't until I saw these Ghani flats that at least everyone I follow on Instagram has been wearing. I literally cannot escape these shoes. I feel like they're the shoe of the fall. A statement shoe is always a fun little addition to any outfit, and I think this is just the beginning of the variations of studded shoes that we're gonna start to see. And don't even get me started on buckle boots, specifically the Miu Miu buckle boots. No way in hell I could ever justify spending that amount of money on a shoe. I mean, my bank account wouldn't allow me to at the moment, even if I wanted to, so I've been looking secondhand for a pair of black buckle moto boots. Obviously unsuccessful, but I'm hoping maybe by saying this and putting it out into the world, the thrift gods will. Maybe bless me. Can you guys put in a good word for me? Because it's getting it's getting a bit dire. I don't own enough boots already. I, I have to have these or my life just will never be complete. And I, oh, actually, we only have one more trend to talk about. And it kind of ties in with what I was just talking about, which is motorcycle jackets. After literally years of being on the hunt for a just perfect oversized black leather biker jacket. I finally, at the flea market last week, got my hands on one and it didn't cost me hundreds of dollars, which is even better. Now, I do think that these jackets are timeless. I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen someone throw on one of these jackets and not look just like so effortlessly cool. Oh my God. It's like a problem at this point. I can't stop fucking saying this. At least on my algorithm though, it's only been over the last couple of months that I've really seen people starting to talk about these jackets and it feels like a more natural progression from what I feel like has been more popular over the last couple of years, which is the black blazer leather jacket kind of silhouette and with the rise of studs and buckles and the 2010s making that transition to a leather biker moto jacket just kind of feels like a no duh. Being that it's only been a week since I've had this jacket, I, I have actually worn it one morning, I will say. It was like a particularly chilly fall feeling morning here in Southern California. It was like 65 degrees and cloudy, I think. But as we get into fall and winter, I definitely have some really fun ways I plan on wearing this. Obviously, my top candidate is to pair it with a vintage floral lacy dress and a lacy slip. But I also think just pairing it with like, honestly, some overalls and some loafers would be cool or like some fun maxi skirt the options just like feel endless. If I'm not able to successfully convince everyone that encounters me in these next couple of months that I am the coolest, most effortless person they have ever met, then all of this means nothing and I'm not doing my job correctly. I think that's what this video really comes down to. So with that being said, I think that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry I wasn't as negative as I usually am and talking shit in my videos. I just wanted to try something new. So let me know if you liked it. As always, I wanna know your thoughts. So let me know in the comments what trends you are excited to be trying out this fall. And maybe, maybe you can spread some negativity that I didn't and let me know some trends that maybe you're seeing and you hate. Why not? I just, I'm rotted, aren't I? Yeah. Stay sexy, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.